Hello, and welcome to this eCampus News Webinar, Dealing with Disaster, One University's Experience. My name is Chris Hobson, and I am the Custom Content Manager for eCampus News. And I'm excited to have you join us for what should be a very informative session. Today's webinar is sponsored by SingleWire Software. SingleWire Software is the developer of InformaCast, a leading software solution for fast and reliable emergency notifications. More than 7,000 organizations in over 50 countries use InformaCast for emergency mass notifications. Before I introduce our presenters, I'd like to take a minute to go over some features of the platform that we're using for this webinar. Today's event will be recorded, so you don't have to worry about missing a thing. Within a few days, you'll receive an email message that contains a link to the recorded webinar, along with a PDF of the slides. You can submit questions at any time during the presentation by clicking on the Q&A box. There will be time at the end of our presentation for the speakers to address questions. Also, there is a group chat function that you can launch by clicking on chat. Feel free to use this feature to contact someone from the eCampus News team if you have a technical question. But please don't use this feature to ask questions of our speaker. If you have a question for the speakers, you can use the Q&A box that I just mentioned. With these housekeeping items out of the way, let's get started with our presentation. The presenters today are Pat Sheckel, Executive Vice President of Product Management for Single Wire Software, and Scott Hans, Director of Network Operations at Biola University. Pat has more than 15 years of experience helping organizations across a wide range of industries implement tools that enhance safety and communication. Scott serves as Director of Network Operations for Biola University at La Mirada, California, in La Mirada, California. His team oversees all voice and data network services for the university's 95-acre campus. At this time, I'm going to turn things over to Pat to begin the presentation. All right. Thank you, Chris. So I'm going to go through just uh, really three quick slides before we turn it over to our main event, which is uh, Scott, the customer, uh, talking about his experience. A little bit of background on us, the, the sponsor, Single Wire Software. We're the makers of InformaCast, which is a mass notification platform. It's often used for emergency notifications. We're based in Madison, Wisconsin. We have about 115 people on staff. Our very first version was released nearly 20 years ago, although our cloud platform is significantly newer, uh, is about five years old or so. We have about 7,000 customers in, in more than 50 countries. And what we do is we send notifications, text, audio, and images from a wide variety of devices to a wide variety of devices. I'm not doing a demonstration today, although I would encourage you to contact us if you'd like, like to see one. We can do a, a very immersive demonstration over video. We can show many of these things that are on this slide uh, live over video. And the basic premise is this, that we have a more effective notification platform because we send to more devices and we get there faster. So the speed, the reach, and then the intrusiveness of streaming audio, because we tie into things that broadcast audio, like turning your desk phones into emergency notification speakers, taking over all of your overhead paging systems at once, whether that's one building or 30 buildings, going to your digital signage, going to uh, IP speakers and so on. So it's the, those on-premises capabilities together with what everybody else does around mass notification, which is send to mobile phones. And then we tie in the collaboration piece for incident management as well, whether you're using Microsoft or Cisco for that. So just to tie that all together with one last slide before I turn over to Scott, this was a, an SEC university, as it says. And the idea here was that they had a problem where they had a gunman run through campus uh, from the community. And thankfully, no one was harmed in that incident, but they realized that it took them 10 to 12 minutes to send out a notification because they had siloed notification systems. They would log into their giant voice system to send audio out to the, the plazas and the quads. They would send a, an email, they would send a text, they would update their website uh, because that was their source of truth that they pointed people to. They would send tw uh, to Twitter and so on. Well, when you stacked up all of those different things, they had about half a dozen systems they had to log into. And that process took too long to log in, create the message, send times six. 
they put in Informacast, it tied all those together, they sent one message, and you can see the scale that they're able to get in terms of sending to many devices, reaching people faster. Again, speed, reach, and intrusiveness equals more effective notifications. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Scott. I believe we have our first poll question. We're gonna have a couple poll questions pop up just to take the pulse of the people uh, out there. I'm gonna stop sharing and, and Scott will bring up his presentation. In the meantime, you can go ahead and answer that first poll question, which reads, are you sending alerts to mobile and on-premises devices during an emergency? All right. Go ahead, Scott. Thank you. Seeing my screen here. Yep. Okay. Uh, do you want to wait to do the poll response first, or should we go ahead and get started? Once you go ahead and get started, we can always loop back to the responses. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Pat. Thank you, uh, eCampus as well. And just thank you all for the opportunity to, to be here today and to share with you. Um, again, my name is Scott Himes. Um, and today we'll be talking about dealing with a disaster and uh, sharing our university's experience. Uh, I'm not going to claim to have it all figured out uh, by any means, uh, but I would like to share with you some of the tools that we've added uh, to our emergency preparedness uh, toolbox, our playbook, and some of the lessons that we've learned along the way as we've done that. And yeah, again, thanks to eCampus News and SingleWire for the chance to be with you. I'm just grateful for the opportunity to share. Hopefully you learned something uh, or have the opportunity to ask questions and we can um, follow up afterwards. So uh, let's get into it. Um, again, just a little about me and where I'm from. My name is uh, Scott Himes and the Director of Network Operations at Biola University on our uh, information technology team. Uh, Biola is a private Christian university on 95 acres in sunny Southern California. It's still sunny here as of today. So we'll see how long we get to enjoy that. Um, and we have a few, uh, just a little over 6,000 students uh, at the university. This session, um, as we mentioned, we'll be talking about how we built a campus mass notification system on a tight budget here at Biola and some of the exciting things we're doing with it and things that we've learned uh, about it in the process. Uh, but before we jump in, I wanted to answer a question and address an assumption as well. And the question I think you might be asking is uh, this, why is an IT guy here presenting uh, and talking about an emergency notification or communication? Doesn't this job belong in our campus police department? Um, and I think the answer to that is both yes um, and no. Biola's campus safety department does care greatly about it. They're the primary stakeholder for our ENS systems on our campus and they care uh, a ton about the, the deployment, the efficacy of those systems. Um, but I'm the one here giving this talk today because campus safety can't build and maintain a system like this alone. That's what we do in IT, right? So that's, that's our bread and butter. Um, so is this campus safety's job alone? And it's yes, but I think no um, as well, because they need you, IT, as a trusted partner. It's a joint effort. Um, and I'm talking you to you today uh, because of the close partnership that Biola's IT department has developed with Biola's campus safety department over the last few years. Your campus police department does need you, IT. It's a joint partnership here. And then my assumption is that we all understand the importance and see value in mass notification emergency communication systems. I'm not gonna try and spend time convincing you of that, um, but your campus needs you. Uh, this is important and you all play an important role in it. So uh, a little context about our environment at Biola, we're using the systems represented here. We use Cisco's uh, Unified Communications Manager VoIP phone system, um, along with single wire software's emergency notification system software called Informacast, which Pat mentioned. We use those tools to then broadcast emergency notifications via uh, public address system, um, public address speakers uh, to you know bull, large bullhorn style speakers around campus um, and about 140 campus VoIP uh, phones via their speaker phone, uh, like Pat mentioned as well. And just to note, we're using Informacast on-prem solution um, with our on-premise phone system, but Informacast Fusion uh, is their cloud product and they began to integrate with some UCAS vendors as well. So if you're headed that direction, that may be um, an opportunity to pursue. Um, I'll get into a little more detail about our systems in a little bit. Uh, but before I jump back to the past and I talk about where we began, I wanted to show a short video that highlights something really exciting that we've been able to make happen really quickly here because of that systems foundation uh, that I just described. 
So take a look at this short video. There's a 99.7% chance that we're going to have a 7.0 or greater earthquake in California in the next 30 years, and that's, that's a big wake-up call. We're committed to getting earthquake early warning out to as many people as we can across the whole western United States. We have breaking news, and it's coming to us out of Anchorage, Alaska. Scientists have been saying for years that the West Coast is due for Southern a major California earthquake. Southern California is overdue for a major and possibly catastrophic and earthquake. And that warning system, it worked today in two very important tasks. Early Warning Labs is an enterprise SAS business who's an official partner with the USGS, US Geological Survey. Through that partnership, uh, what we focus on is delivering earthquake early warnings to both individuals and large commercial organizations. We are not predicting earthquakes. We are outrunning the earthquake. The earthquake happens at the epicenter. There's a magnitude, which is the intensity of the shaking at that site, and then those waves ripple out. They're picked up by the USGS sensors across California, Oregon, and Washington. They send us a location in the magnitude of the quake, and then we do calculations in the cloud and send out the customer alert. Earthquake, very strong. At your location, you get a notification of both the intensity of the earthquake and the time until it hits. So if we start looking at, okay, well, what's the average going to be? It's 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 20 seconds? You start thinking about, well, what really can you do? And the answer is a ton. The big things in an earthquake are entrapment, are crushing injuries, are fires. With earthquake early warning implemented on site, 50% of injuries from earthquakes can be mitigated. To drop cover and hold on, to prevent half the injuries, that takes three or four seconds. For us to stop a commuter train like we do with LA Metro, to take an elevator to the closest floor, and the way that we do that is we connect through the existing elevator control systems. We also connect to existing PA systems, existing fire alarm systems. So when you start thinking about all the different things you can do, it's, it's really in, in small windows of time, which is great because, you know, realistically, that's, that's what we're looking at. After the Northridge quake in 1994, there were multiple fire trucks stuck in the station because the fire station doors had jammed. Being able to prevent that is huge. The firefighters can pull their rigs out of the station before the shaking starts. Turning on backup generators at hospitals. Even with 10 seconds, we can cover the patient and we can get them into a survivable spot. Okay, so since Biola is in a suburb of Los Angeles, earthquakes are a reality we live with and prepare for, uh, but not something we've been able to get any kind of early warning about until now. Um, after the recent large earthquakes in California back in July of last year, we learned about early warning labs and their partnership with Informacast. And as you saw in the video, early warning labs provides this service that can give early notification about a coming earthquake and push that broadcast to an existing mass notification or public address system. Well, we we already had the Cisco VoIP uh, plus Informacast system groundwork laid, we realized this was something we could really easily deploy. We could leverage existing infrastructure, we could build on our foundation and our partnership with campus safety, and we could employ a service that could dramatically increase student, faculty, and staff safety. It was a no-brainer for us. Earthquake early warning wasn't even on our radar when we first put the system in place, but now it's become an exciting and essential part of Biola's mass notification and public address strategy and a great example for us of what can be built on top of that, the solid foundation that we had started. So now that I've told you kind of the end of the story, let me back up and tell you how we got there. Uh, when we talk about mass or emergency notification, it's a really broad topic, I know. Um, and a lot of you are probably already aware of the, the wide array of different strategies and technologies you can use in that, um, under that banner. There's just a lot of ways to tackle the challenge. But the question might be, what's most effective for your campus? And is there only one right approach or technology? Well, on many campuses, the outdoor PA system is, is just one of many systems that are used, uh, layered to use, uh, to alert the campus to emergency scenarios. When I gave this same presentation at Educause last fall, we took a straw poll of eight of the schools that were represented in that session. And we found that all of those schools used um, text messaging, opt-in uh, and email. And they use social media, or Twitter specifically, for emergency notification. 
But all of the technologies listed here were used by at least one of the schools. And five of the eight schools said they were using some form of outdoor siren or PA system. And FYI, that screen or that list is ordered from uh, most used to least used in our in that poll. Well, our experience so far would echo that. These different technologies are all different important layers that complement each other and they become more effective when used in parallel to reach as many people as possible. Which then takes us to our story. And our story began with a campus lockdown drill conducted by our campus safety team. The primary feedback we got from that drill uh, revolved around two things. Number one, uh, the emergency notification system, which we had in place currently, which was Blackboard Connect. And number two, uh, a campus-wide public address system, which was something we did not have in place at that point. The overriding message was that people were not aware of the lockdown unless they were already looking at their cell phones. So that became our problem to solve, which was this. Students do not always see or hear the emergency notification systems, text and email alerts. How else can we get their attention in the event of a true crisis? We had many people's cell, phones num cell phone numbers in our ENS system, uh, Blackboard Connect, uh, but we recognize that those alerts may not be seen in a timely manner. Some professors would ask students to silence or put away mobile devices during class and many good students would comply with that. So what do you expect? Uh, same thing with e email, the ENS would send email as well in a crisis, but what if folks aren't looking at email at that time? It's only as good as the people who are looking at that, that uh, source of information. We had no audible announcement system already on our campus. So we needed a supplementary audible attention grabbing means of alerting the campus to a true crisis. And because of an upcoming drill that was already scheduled on our campus, our specific project then became to build, test, and deploy an audible campus PA system to be used for a campus lockdown drill, uh, active shooter drill to be held on March 8, 2017. The catch for us was that the request didn't actually come down until December 2016. So had a bit of a tight window there. So our project faced uh, a lot of familiar project constraints, as you've all experienced probably. Um, we had a short time frame. As we just noted, we had a small budget. We had built some really quick estimates for the project and we were given a $25,000 budget to get it done. So it wasn't a ton of money. Um, we had a li limited personnel. We knew that this project was gonna take work from a number of teams across Biola, IT and facilities both, as well as our campus safety team. We all had other projects on our plates already. Um, and in addition, I knew we would need outside help from um, consultants for the InformaCast setup for multicast configuration, um, audio and speaker installation and tie in to InformaCast. So those are all just limitations, constraints we knew we had. Um, another constraint was um, we wanted this to be an integrated system. Um, we decided that when this got started, we would like to deploy a solution that would build off of existing communications infrastructure and not simply be a standalone PA system. Pat talked about having, you know, all those different systems at that uh, SEC school that you had to log into and send alerts. Well, we wanted to try and avoid that, right? Um, and thanks to that early decision, a foundational requirement was to find a solution that could integrate with our existing Cisco VoIP phone system. Our own research led us to single wires and Formicast, which was then confirmed uh, by several partners actually who had helped us with previous projects. And then uh, the final constraint here was just reduced scope. We we reduced the scope of the project thinking that we would have a better chance of hitting our deadline if we did that and just did a single PA system, uh, single PA speaker uh, installation site instead of trying to cover the entire campus. We thought we could use this as a beta site. We could you do you know use this for the drill and then it would serve as a proof of concept for future expansion to the rest of campus. Um, and reducing scope also included just choosing single wires and formicasts right off the bat. We would typically try and do more of a you know, requirements definition and select software, but InformaCast came so highly recommended that we um, we just went forward with that. Um, we had the project green lit and we started just a rapid deployment project uh, process in January uh, of that year. We hosted an in-depth demo of InformaCast just to get everyone familiar with it, uh, make sure everybody was on the same page and then find out what else we uh, could do. We learned what else could InformaCast could do for us in the process, things like 911 call monitoring, um, which we weren't aware of, uh, panic buttons, blue light phone improvements, um, and I'll touch on some of those later. We nailed down our install location on the campus. We wanted to build this at the heart of campus on a major thoroughfare. So those green arrows in the picture there just show kind of where the speaker was set and 
the broadcast um, areas that we were trying to cover on that thoroughfare. We worked with our own internal campus uh, facilities group and then an audio contractor as well to look at sound coverage and volume and clarity of spoken word. Um, but also does this install fit into a larger campus install plan, like I mentioned. We had to uh, you know, install and configure Formicast, so our network admins and a voice integrator helped with that, um, integrated that into our UCM, Cisco UCM environment and configured multicast on our campus network. And then our in-house facilities and IT teams installed all the necessary uh, cable and pathways and weatherheads and just all that physical infrastructure that we needed. And with that, um, we you know kept moving in February, our audio contractor helped us get the speaker array and the zone controller and amplifier all installed and set up. We performed a number of tests along the way with campus safety as we just refined the clarity of the audio. Um, but really at this point, we declared the, the system operational and we were under budget, thankfully at that point by, uh, we came in about just shy of 20,000 on our $25,000 budget. And you can see in this picture, our um, uh, PA speaker kind of bullhorn um, installation on the top of that, that building. And uh, here were just a couple really brief uh, audio tests. This was a close one from like 30 feet away. This is a test, this is a test. And then uh, this was another test uh, a little further away, 100, 100 feet or so. And so then in February that of that year, we also performed training and did a, a large scale audible test with our campus safety team. We just wanted to, again, test the operation, but get campus safety um, dispatchers familiar with the system, how to launch alerts, um, and then test for the clarity of the spoken word around campus. And this was the just a, a short snippet of uh, what that sounded like. The test. This is a test. This is a test of the Viola University Emergency Public Address System. So we could hear all the words clearly as far away as our gym entrance that was a couple hundred feet away so we were really excited about that especially with this just being you know the single um, install point on on our campus uh, at this time at least so then in early march um, we also added in some cisco uh, desktop desk phones as a speakerphone endpoints because we knew that that informacast would let us do that um, and we wanted to to have that same audio that was coming out the bullhorns outside to come out a number of um, Cisco desk phones in offices. And so working with campus safety, we added about 43 phones to our recipient group um, for inclusion in that drill. And then the day before the drill, we actually used Informacast to send out this text message on the screen here to all the Cisco phones to be involved in the drill, just giving them a heads up that they would hear something um, coming out of their phones the next day. So they were totally taken by surprise on that. We conducted um, on March 7th of that year, we conducted one final audible test of the system with campus safety, including the PA system speakers and a few desk phones. And we were really grateful we ran this final test uh, because it came out audibly of the PA, from the PA speakers in one of the desk phones, but not a couple of the others. And that just revealed some unfinished multicast configuration. We had to go clean up uh, that was corrected and we ran some more tests and had it nailed, but it, that proved again to us the value of testing, making sure that we had had everything um, ready to go. And at that point we were ready for the drill that was happening the next day. That was March 8th, the big day. Um, and we got to attend the drill and see the PA system perform uh, flawlessly. It was great. So we got to pat ourselves on the back for that. But then um, the more exciting, you know, that was exciting, but then we had a, lot, a number of things that came uh, after that that have been really uh, special as well. Um, for us and our campus. And one of those has been our uh, panic buttons, panic button system replacement. So shortly after the success of the PA system, campus safety came back to us and said, hey, IT, this worked great. What would it take to replace our aging panic button infrastructure around the campus with Informacast? We had a dozen, probably a dozen different styles of panic buttons around campus, um, all using analog phone lines and all suffering different levels of reliability and typically long delays in response times. Um, so our goals for this project were just eliminate the old panic button infrastructure and use our Cisco phones instead and physical panic buttons with Informacast. 
We want to standardize on a deployment method, um, on what type of panic buttons are used in different locations. So where do we use a phone versus a physical button? Uh, we wanted to train our staff members on how to use the buttons and train campus safety officers on how to respond. And really it just had to be awesome, right? It had to be a reliable, consistent system. Um, the panic buttons had to activate immediately and just work. And we knew all of this was possible with Informacast. So we got to work on that as well. And this is what it looked like in our environment, um, how we, we set up our phones. Uh, and this was the physical, that's a, a, a cyber data SIP uh, call button that we used in a few locations um, as well. It was really simple to set up. It was a combination of preset speed dials, a dial cast number in Informacast and fixed IP addresses for the phones. Um, and then, yeah, like I mentioned, the cyber data SIP call button in uh, uh, just seven locations, I think, with fixed IPs as well, and a UCM route pattern extension. So when this panic button system using Informacast was initially deployed uh, in 2017, there were 38 phones and seven physical buttons. And now we have 93 phones and seven physical buttons. So that's grown quite a bit. And uh, the response has been very, uh, very positive to this installation. The response time from panic button activation to the notification of our comm center dispatchers could have been upwards of three minutes before on the old system. And with this system, they became instant. It was just as fast as a speed dial, which is what we were all looking for. This is what our comm center dispatchers see in campus safety when a panic alarm is triggered. So the alert uh, window on the left is a pop-up window that appears using Informacast desktop notifier app um, running on their PCs. And then the screenshot on the right is uh, what they see on the phones themselves. Uh, and all of that happens simultaneously. The phone starts up with basically a chime when those come in, it alerts them with a chime. The speakerphone is activated on the phone with the microphone mute permanently on. Um, so campus safety you can hear everything that's going on on the other end of that speakerphone call, um, but doesn't transmit any audio back to the um, to the incident location. Uh, the phone has the same you know, text gives allows us to program that and say, you know, this is this person's phone in this location. Um, and we also added that same functionality that what you see on the phone here to five of the campus safety admins are so our chief, uh, our our uh, comm center um, coordinator. Uh, so that they also receive these same notifications uh, on their phone when a panic alert comes in. So we've got a total of eight different phones, eight different people that are aware of the fact that a panic button has been triggered. Um, and uh, uh, it's just, it's instant awareness, which is fantastic. So it was a huge success. Then uh, after that, in, back in, in 2018, our campus safety group came and asked us to expand the PA system at that point. They wanted to broaden the coverage from a single speaker array to the rest of our campus. And our goals here were to complete the campus PA coverage by adding um, four additional speaker arrays and then extend licensing uh, to encompass as many admin desk phones as possible, try and grow that spread as well. We initially thought we could do this with only two speaker arrays. Um, but we ended up uh, creating four additional arrays across the campus and we were budgeted another 20,000 um, to complete that work. And this is a map showing uh, just our single uh, initial install um, in the kind of landscape of our campus. Um, this shows, this image shows our phase two, which um, added the, the four additional uh, towers across the campus. And then this last shot just shows uh, all five of our towers installed, covering the majority of the campus here. So again, uh, came in under our $20,000 budget. We were really pleased about that too, just from a cost standpoint and a, a time frame standpoint, being able to get that done in a short amount of time. Um, we had successfully blanketed the campus outdoor space with uh, audible public address. Then as we built our new science building, we added two uh, Valcom blue light emergency phone towers that also double as Informacast PA speaker endpoints. So the, the tower is a you know, typical blue light tower, but has that speaker array up at the top underneath the blue light that allows us to push those same audible alerts out of these towers as well. So that just, again, continued to expand the, the coverage of that audible broadcast. 
And lastly, for now, um, but certainly not least, we've had the pleasure of partnering with Early Warning Labs, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, to tie our campus mass notification system to their cloud-based earthquake early detection system. And this slide uh, demonstrates the success of that system in the two Ridgecrest, California quakes that happened um, last July. Um, it was the first wide-scale test of earthquake early warning in a large seismic event, and Early Warning Labs was able to successfully deliver warnings of 50 plus seconds before the shaking was felt. That's incredibly exciting. Uh, so our deployment of that tool um, went like this, and and it was a it's a brief timeline because it was a really fast deployment. Um, those earthquakes happened over the July Fourth weekend. Um, last year. And then we saw the publicity from Informacast about the Early Warning Labs partnership shortly after that on July 11th and asked for some more information. We got our senior leadership aware of it and um, spoke with Early Warning Labs on July 18th to learn more, to get a quote, and with Campus Safety's approval, decided to move forward with it. Our integration happened on August 7th. We alerted the city, uh, La Mirada City, about the new system and our plan to test it. They were extremely excited about it for us, but also uh, came back asking how they could participate in it. How could they get the same kind of system? Um, so we've had some good conversations with them on that front. Um, and then we did a uh, full Audible campus test on September 16th. It was at that point, it was live. We were done in production with this new system. And then we had the honor of using that earthquake early warning system to kick off the Great California Shakeout exercise, which was hosted, uh, Biola was the, the main media event for the SoCal Shakeout Day um, last year, October 17th. And it was just a pleasure to be able to, to use that to kick off the event. This is uh, how it looks, it would look and sound um, on our campus on one of these phones uh, in the event of a real earthquake. Earthquake. Earthquake, expect shaking, drop, cover, hold on, protect yourself now. Earthquake, earthquake, expect shaking, drop, cover, hold on, protect yourself now. So we don't have those obviously on, on every phone at this point across the campus. We'd love to get to that point, um, but, uh, but about 150 phones at this point now, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll continue to grow that. Um, this slide from Early Warning Labs shows their integration options, just gives you a, a sense of what, what they're able to do. But the point I wanted to make with this slide is this, um, we learned about uh, Early Warning Labs and this integration and partnership with Informacast in July, and we had the integration up and running before the start of our school year in September, September 3rd. And we were able to make this happen so quickly because of solid foundations. Uh, because we had a scalable technology stack that included Cisco UCM and Informacast, and we had a trusted partnership between IT and campus safety uh, that encouraged this. So a few lessons that we learned, um, things to take away if you're looking to do something similar, uh, install a system like this, uh, and uh, yeah, just a few things we've learned along the way. One. One was that there was just no single system, no one perfect system to reach everyone. All of these different tools, uh, PA, text, email, uh, mobile apps, et cetera, they're all separate layers working together to best reach our entire campus. So the question for you might be what, you know, what layer would be most helpful for your campus at this time? Uh, where do you begin? Um, the next thing that I learned, we learned, I think, was just that partnerships are key. Um, have you developed a solid partnership with your public safety or your IT team, depending on your role? Um, for us, this initial deployment and then the subsequent set of solutions and um, uh, successes really grew out of the partnership that we had with campus safety. So how could you take a first step towards forming a partnership like that on your campus? I would encourage you to take that first step to begin laying that groundwork. The next was that testing is critical. That's how we learned where we were weak. That's how we continue to learn where we are weak, where we need to grow, improve. We always can, can do better. Um, and we all know that that's important, but I think it's sometimes it's easy to minimize that, uh, but it's, it's critical, test, test, test. Uh, our campus safety chief has worked with a number of other schools that don't test 
they've told him they don't test the systems that they have. So how do you know that it's going to work when you need it to work? Um, maybe you're in a position where you could help plan a test of one of those systems. Take advantage of that opportunity on your campus and and put a test in place. Partner with your uh, campus teams to to do some testing um, to make sure that it's actually going to perform the way you expect it to perform when you need it to. Leverage your existing resources to the best of your ability. Um, the, the only way we could get this done so quickly and cost effectively was because we leveraged our existing phone system foundation. So what do you have um, that you can take advantage of that you can leverage and build from yourself? Uh, Informa Council is a great option for us, um, for PA and obviously much more. Um, it was a very solid system to deploy for campus mass emergency communications, not just as the PA, as we mentioned, but but so many other uses and, and many others that we have yet to explore. Um, it was easy to deploy. It was simple. It's really simple to use. Um, there's a, a new interface, new UI that has simplified that even more. Um, and it's just, it's very flexible. Their pre-sales and post-sales teams were great. Um, their training resources on SingleWire's website are, are fantastic. Um, so a lot of good stuff to check out there. And I would encourage you to do that. Um, one other lesson we learned uh, as a little one, but just note if you're looking to do on-prem InformaCast, um, server resiliency or failover HA um, was a, a minor add-on. It was like, I think it was like a $300 license for us. So it wasn't much. It was just something to be aware of. If you want HA, um, get that extra license. So what's next for us? Um, additional uses, I think for us right now, like many of you, we're just we're just trying to survive. We're making it through this um, the season we're living through right now with the, the COVID pandemic and all of the impact um, to higher education. But when we are able to get back to campus full time, uh, we'll be working on some of these things. We would like to install one more speaker array uh, on the top of our main administration building. I think that would really finish rounding out our campus audible coverage outside. Uh, we want to explore using InformaCast 911 call aware, which would just alert us to the fact that people are making 911 calls from the campus um, and allow us to record those calls and, um, and pinpoint the, the caller's locations quickly. We'd like to explore integrations with existing PA systems. We have a PA system in our library that's, that has been there for a while, um, and we think we can integrate with InformaCast so we can do things like automated alerts um, for closing bells and, and that kind of thing in the library. Um, so we want to take advantage of that. Uh, we'd like to install some PA endpoints in inside buildings as well. Um, so putting PA speakers inside classrooms or offices, other locations where they could be heard um, clearly and audibly inside the building and not just outside the building. And then possibly taking over, using InformaCast to take over screens uh, in classrooms or digital signage um, so that we could push emergency messaging to those locations as well. And this is just a quick note. I'm just leaving it in the slide deck as FYI. Um, I described our environment briefly built on UCM, Cisco UCM and call manager. Um, I'm guessing there are a lot of different phone systems represented here. So I recognize this solution that I described probably won't work for everyone. Um, with that in mind, I just wanted to include a couple of references to some other similar solutions. Um, just know that there are other options out there if you're not a Cisco UCM shop, um, but you can reference those uh, after the presentation. And with that, I think I am done. Here's my contact information if you have any questions for me after the fact. But um, I believe at this point, I will hand it back to Chris um, for any Q&A that has come in um, along the way. Thank you, Scott. Um, fantastic presentation. Um, a lot of great information there. Um, reminder, if you do have a question, um, go ahead and on the Q&A tab and enter your question. And um, we'll get to it as time permits. Um, first question, I guess, we'll circle back to both of you. Um, Pat, why don't you hit this one first so Scott can catch his breath. Um, typically what a campus is often forget to consider when implementing a mass notification system. Yeah, good question. I, I think the, the biggest thing is, is something that Scott certainly avoided, but it's, it's not checking with all the potential stakeholders to understand what the needs are. And so you see point solutions being deployed for one thing or another um, without understanding the whole. And 
and if that happens, then you can kind of put yourself in a corner and not have a path to grow and to integrate and so forth. So I think that's probably the, the biggest. It's just understanding all the needs of the different groups, stakeholders, departments, et cetera, on a campus. Scott, anything to add there? I, I would agree with that. I think that's that is number one, um, the, the number one thing. Uh, just uh, so much about what we do in IT is, I mean, obviously it's about technology. Um, those are the tools that we use, uh, but it's people who use those tools. And, um, and so the work that we do with the people on our campus um, to, to understand the needs, to gather the requirements, um, and to put solutions in place that, that will actually meet those needs and not just provide flashy bells and whistles, um, that's, that's critical. That, and that's where the hard work really is. I think once you, you, know, you get to the technology part of it, installing the technology can be the easy part um, in a lot of ways. Um, but it's the it's the people work um, that can take a lot of extra time and and effort, and I think ultimately pays um, more dividend over the long haul too. Because um, as I mentioned a number of times, you know that we were we were able to do these things, um, many of them so seamlessly, um, and and move on them so quickly because we had those relationships in place. It was the technology was was second to the fact that we have these relationships with our campus safety team. Uh, um, established and and it's there's a there's a trust there. Okay, another question here, um, and for both of you, so I sort of like to hear both sides here. What do you think are the most important features? I know we touched on a bunch of them, um, but like, what are your top features uh, for campuses to have access to? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Um, I think it, it depends on the campus, but as you saw during Scott's presentation, you know, everybody has, you know, some sort of mobile notification and, and for campuses that makes sense. I mean, with the Clery Act, um, you know, post Virginia Tech, um, that's a, that's a mandate, that's a regulatory mandate to have some sort of mass notification system and, and the, the common denominator is, uh, is mobile notifications. With, with that said, I think the, the key takeaway from Scott's presentation, there's so many good things in there, but the, the biggest thing is to, to do something, right? And, and so it's walk before you run. You saw how they started with one PA system and then a, a few phones. They, they layered on the earthquake, earthquake early warning later. Um, you look at the things he wants to do in the future with digital signage and, and so forth. But so many people look at that and say, there's so many things I could do that they don't do anything. Um, beyond the bare minimum. And so really setting forward that plan and walking before you run, I think is, is really important. And so those use cases might be a little different based on your campus. Obviously, earthquake doesn't apply everywhere in the US, but other things, other things certainly do. And, and they're gonna be, you know, tornadoes are gonna be important in certain places, whereas they're not, you know, where, where Scott lives. Um, but identifying those first, what we call the first four and, and working through those scenarios before you move on and try to take care of anything larger. Yeah, I think I would, I agree completely. And I would uh, just add maybe one place to explore starting if you weren't doing anything at all would be the, the mobile notification um, and messaging. I think getting, and I, I, I didn't mention um, what we're doing now. We were, I said, we're, we were using Blackboard Connect at the time. Um, I think we're using Rave's mobile app, uh, or we're not even using the mobile app. We're just using Rave Guardian um, to to send our text messaging from campus safety, and that's an area that I think we have some work to do because I think we could clean up how we tie um, Informacast and Rave together. But um, uh, but getting uh, notification directly to people on the devices that they're looking at using in the moment. Um, while that doesn't, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not foolproof. Like we talked about, it's, you know, we, we needed that outdoor, we, we wanted to have that outdoor, um, broadcast as well. Um, but that the, the targeted messaging is, is pretty key, um, to getting the, those alerts quickly to your people. So I, if I were, that's probably the place that I would start if I were looking for one, like, you know, where do I begin on this journey? That, I think that's probably where I would begin.
Okay, thank you. Um, so above and beyond the emergency alerting, how might campuses use a mass notification for like daily activities? Any thoughts to that? We see customers doing all sorts of, of different things there. We see um, campuses asking in, in pandemic times now, we look at our message database and what's being sent. Uh, we see people doing health verifications, asking people if they're safe, asking people if they're healthy, check, ask symptom checks and having people respond uh, on the mobile device with, uh, with their answer. Um, we see people doing things like workflow alerting. So, you know, if you need so many people for a shift or for an event, sending out a broadcast to the pool of people in the first 10 or 20, whatever you need that respond, they get that work. Um, so there's a lot of day-to-day -day notifications uh, that are happening. Really, anytime you think of communicating to a group of people and needing to get some sort of answer back, um, we see we see that that being used for that. People come to us with the idea of emergency notification first, but once they have us, uh, the system, they're using it for all sorts of things. Yeah, I think what I mentioned in our presentation is um, about the library wanting to tie into the existing PA system that that is in our library is something that um, I see that as just an everyday use of that system, right? Being able to say, um, the library is closing in five minutes, um, or the library is closing in 30 minutes, please check out, uh, make your way to the checkout, you know, that those kinds of, like somebody's physically doing that right now. There's a person whose job it is to make those audible announcements at the end of the day. Um, why are they doing that? We get, you know, that's all stuff that could be recorded and, and played back on a, on a bell schedule, essentially, right? Um, and so things like that are just uses that we haven't explored, but but definitely uh, plan to. Great information. Um, again, a very, very uh, informative conversation today. Um, if you submitted a question today and we didn't get to it, um, somebody from Single Wire will follow up with you directly. Um, I'd like to thank both of our presenters today for a very informative presentation. And I'd like to thank all the audience members for joining us as well. As a reminder, you'll get an email within the next few days that contains a link to this recording along with the slides. Thanks again for participating and everybody have a great rest of your day.